It's common when discussing the history of the motion picture to attempt to find the person who was the first. To say, so-and-so came up with the concept of this or that before anyone else. But in reality, trying to pinpoint a definitive start to a new concept or idea is not so easy. The creation of the modern film was not done in a linear way. Many ideas were being worked on and developed by a lot of people at the same time with a lot of overlap. And whether this person was a month, a day, or an hour ahead of this person, in my opinion, is insignificant. When one hears of a significant, a significant discovery or invention, we tend to think of it as a light bulb going off over somebody's head, but that's rarely the case. Many inventors take a lot of ideas done by a lot of other people and just put it all together. For years, the 1902 film by Edwin S. Porter called The Life of an American Fireman, made for the Edison Manufacturing Company, was considered a lost film, a legendary silent film that could only be read about, never seen. Nowadays, the film is available for anyone to see in various versions all over the internet. There are two points of interest of the film that I would like to discuss, the film's history and its significance in the development of the motion picture. Life of an American Fireman was the creation of Edwin S. Porter, a producer, director, studio manager, and cinematographer with the Edison Manufacturing Company, who only began to make films a couple of years earlier. What makes American Fireman important was its use of multiple shots edited together to create a chronological sequence of events. The film uses nine shots to make seven scenes. It also may or may not be the first to use cross-cutting or parallel editing. You see, the idea that one could cut between two sets of actions that are happening at the same time wasn't immediately apparent to filmmakers in the early days. Most were still thinking in terms of the theater, where the camera was taking the place of an audience member. In this case, Porter had the actions of the firemen outside a burning house, while at the same time, a mother and child inside the house. Until recently, this was thought to be the first example of cross-cutting. Another myth about Porter's film is that it was heavily influenced by the 1901 English short film called Fire, directed by James Williamson. This might be true to some extent, but there's a bit more to it than that. Before the age of film, there was something called the Magic Lantern. These were basically a series of drawings or photographs that were projected onto a screen or a wall. One such example of a Magic Lantern show was a series of 12 images called Bob the Fireman, which was very popular in the late 1800s, and it was still around at the time Porter made his film. The story of Bob the Fireman was very similar to that of American Fireman. And, at the turn of the century, stories about the heroes of fire rescue were a mainstream in popular culture, so making a film about a fireman rescuing people from a burning building would have been something one might expect around that time. In fact, there were quite a few other films already produced about fire in the fire department. What was unusual about Life of an American Fireman wasn't its subject matter, but its use of multiple shots to tell a story. While Porter might have been the first American to do this, he definitely wasn't the first. George Millay's 1902 film A Trip to the Moon used multiple shots and special effects to tell a story. Porter had seen Millay's film and was heavily influenced by it. In fact, Porter may have helped Hedison bootleg a copy of A Trip to the Moon for their own profits, but that's another story for another day. But even before Millay's, the idea was already around. Originally, films were made by pointing the camera at a subject, cranking the handle until the film ran out, about 45 to 60 seconds, and that was all there was to it. A film was done. These little films, in many cases, would be ordinary people doing ordinary things, or to document events, like fire equipment rushing down a street. It was common for people showing these little one-minute silent films to group independent films together to tell a story. Let's say someone had a film of a fireman getting the call about a fire, and someone else made a film of fire equipment rushing down the street, and then there was another film of firemen putting out a fire. Distributors would show one film after another as if they belonged together to tell a story. 
A narrator would talk while these films were being shown, telling the audience the story that they wanted to tell. So the idea of multiple shots to create a narrative was already there, and it was only a matter of time before people began splicing together clips into longer forms. In a way, that's what Porter did. He found stock footage of firemen in the Edison's archive and used those along with stage action to create his film. Edwin S. Porter's film was truly a remarkable film for its time. And when we watch the film, we can see just how far filmmaking had come since its introduction about seven years earlier and how far it had to go to become the art form we all know and love today. Now in part two of this series, we will be looking at the film itself and what makes it so special. I hope you come back for that one. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a comment and like the page. Thank you.